Those alone, no compensation culture, but they're clearly areas that are being exploited and need to be looked at. So we're going to get a lot of these, we're going to get these claims coming through. What my job today is to try and help you minimise the time that you spend on them, the effort that you put into them in defending them, and hopefully reflect that in uh, your insurance premiums. And look how we can try and keep those under control. I suppose before I start off with the seven habits, I better acknowledge Steve Covey who uh, came up with the seven habits of highly effective people. If I didn't do that, then uh, lots of lawyers around, I'd probably end up being sued for using this particular um, uh, tool at the end of the day. So, what are the seven habits that I've noticed that uh, successful defendants have? Well, those seven habits are that they uh, look after witnesses, that they cultivate witnesses. Um, the importance of a good witness cannot be overstated when defending a case. In recent the urban claims now, um, unless you can bring evidence forward from a witness to rebut what the claimant says about potential exposure to asbestos 30, 40 years ago, then in those cases, in the show cause hearing, which is the beginning of those cases, the intention of the court is to enter judgment against you and to award the claimant £50,000 on that day. And that's done within two or three months of the case actually starting. That's a first step. So you're already on the back foot and trying to defend those cases. Unless you can produce a witness who can rebut what they say, or documentary evidence, and a witness who can support the documentary evidence, then you're finding yourself very much in a difficult situation. So witnesses are very, very important. The lack of witnesses is also an important factor. In both the Atomic Veterans case and the Miners Knee Litigation, both cases, which are big group actions brought by thousands of people wanting to claim compensation, both defendants were able to defend the claim on the basis that they didn't have any witnesses. But they were able to document what happened to those witnesses. So they knew who they were to start with, but they were able to track them and identify that they'd either died, moved away from the country, or whatever. So witnesses, I can't overstate as being something that, as, a, as professionals, you really ought to be looking to cultivate. So very important to identify them. Identify them at the outset. Identify who they are. So let's make sure we keep a note of their names. Make sure what their job role was, or is at the time. Make sure we know what their work relationship is to the victim of the accident, or whoever's making the claim. And make sure if there's any, if we know of any personal relationships as well. So having done all of that, and captured that information, as well as their address, which is very important, and their contact number, perhaps even more important, if they've got a mobile phone and a, and a normal landline, that's good. Email addresses, everything nowadays, is record it. Absolutely keep a list of those witnesses, keep a schedule of those witnesses, and keep it somewhere safe. Keep it electronically, people will say Data Protection Act and all of those kind of things. That's not an issue when you are collecting information like this in connection with an accident. You can hold it, and you should hold it. Now once the case starts as well, it's very important for you guys, you're the ones who are at the sharp end, keeping in touch with those witnesses and encouraging them to take part in the process. It is quite a difficult situation because people will be going to court potentially, uh, maybe seem to be defending the company, but you guys have the best relationship with them. If you can encourage them to take part in the process, then you will really add value to yourself and to the organisation. 